All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Magnaca, who is up in the Toronto area, correct? Yes, today I'm in Toronto area, but normally uh, our office is in Boston. And Mark is president and co-founder of Allego. And prior to Allego, Mark was president of Insight Development Group, a sales enablement consulting firm. Mark is a co-author of Mastering Virtual Selling. And the new book, I believe, is it Sales, uh, the, uh, the Digital Sales Revolution. That's correct. Yes, it is. Yeah. And what we're going to talk today about is this concept of a digital sales room. And so, I mean, Mark, we might as well just dive straight into it. For those people who have not heard this before, what is a digital sales room? Yeah, sure. So, you know, just to start right off with it, um, a, a digital sales room is a personalized microsite where sellers and buyers can communicate, they can share content, and they can align on mutual value. And it's really a way to adapt to the way people want to buy today, John. If you if you think about it, um, most people do a lot of research. Gartner says they do 70% of the research before they ever want to talk to a seller. And so a DSR or a digital sales room is this place where sellers can orchestrate the content that people are interested in and make it easy for them to access it in a uh, personalized microsite format compared to sending an email with a bunch of attachments and hyperlinks. Right. And so uh, so how, how does this uh, describe some of the things that you might put into a typical digital sales room? And I believe, uh, having listened to some, uh, you talk about this before, that there's not just one type of digital sales room, but you, you can have digital sales rooms according to different parts of your sales process. Is that right? That's exactly right. So, I mean, first to answer your question about what type of content, I think the big idea is content that is relevant. So mm -hmm. what we're really addressing is the fact that um, for so many industries, if, if someone says to a buyer, just go to our website and look for X, the website has so much on it. There's so many different product lines. It's just very easy for people to become overwhelmed. So at, at the highest level, a DSR is a way to curate the very best content that's most likely highly relevant for this buyer. It's a way to be able to engage them personally. So one of the pieces of content can be a short video as an example, sort of like me welcoming you at the front door of my house right. and saying, hey, John, I put this together for you. I know you said this was important. Here's a couple of things that you should take a look at and then allow you to be able to go through that buying process on your own without me pushing you. And I'm getting notified when you are looking at things. So I have a sense of what do you actually care about? And not only that, but the marketing group also has access to this data and analytics to understand of all the content they're creating, what's the content that people actually care about? Mm -hmm. And, so, and, then, and then, sorry, and just before we go into the into the next part about the different types of sales rooms, um, digital sales rooms, I presume, however, this is delivered that it integ it can integrate with the with the CRM or the systems that you're using, or is it an extension of that? Yeah, absolutely, John. You know the way that the, ultimately the way this uh, works for so many organizations now, whether it's in the medical device space or in financial services, manufacturing, is um, the marketing organization is building a series of templates. And so uh, what it does is it makes it very easy for a seller to be able to take a template and all populated with you know content that's mm -hmm. appropriate, be able to um, you know delete or add a few things that are make it hyper relevant for that particular buyer um, and be able to get it out quickly. So it's a way to be able to scale your efforts with a beautifully presented package, again, versus an email that mm -hmm. is uh, very hard to keep track of and very hard to you know, go back in your email to find which was the email that included that particular attachment. Right, right. And so then tell me about the different types um, and the different ways you might use a digital sales room. Yeah, so there's a number of different ways. I mean, we, we think of it sort of in three broad categories. There's what we call the buyer engagement DSR, which is really the main one. And that's where a, an individual seller is either engaging with an individual buyer or a buying group. And so they've taken one of these templates, they've curated content that's relevant, and um, it becomes either something that is 
closed, meaning that hyperlink can only be accessed by people who are on a pre-approved list, mm -hmm. or it becomes something that is open, meaning that link can be accessed, for example, by anybody at a particular company. Right. So that, that's sort of the first uh, chunk of it. And depending upon what type of DSR you're using, there may be a reason to make it just one click and people can access it because it's high level information. But as you move deeper into the funnel, you may want to have a higher level of, of security on it. Right, right. Um, and then there's a, a relationship management DSR. And that's, for example, for someone who may be a, a financial advisor, this is where we may have had a conversation today about what's happening with uh, your portfolio or there's certain content that I'm sharing with you right now. And then when this meeting is over, that's going to get pushed down. And next time we meet in 90 days, there's going to be the new group of information. Mm -hmm. So depending upon what's important to you, there's sort of different ways to be able to use this. And then, you know, one of the things that we're seeing right now, particularly in uh, the medical device space, which I know is big in your, your uh, geographical sure. area, Very big. is uh, the ability to curate educational DSRs. So mm -hmm. it is a specific product uh, that's being used at a specific healthcare facility or hospital. And it is a way to help with that uh, clinical education to get people up to speed and be able to do so in a way that's easy for people to access. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of the things, uh, um, Mark, that I, I've often uh, talked about is, you know, we live in an age where there's so much content, right? I mean, content is... Uh, you know, I, I'm always sometimes wonder like if everybody's producing content, who's actually consuming it. Right. And, and now right. with and now with AI, you know, now we have people thinking that they can just throw out anything into the uh, stratosphere as content. So I guess part of this is uh, the beauty of what you're talking about. Part of this is, I guess, I can figure out over time the content that really performs as opposed to the content that I think is great or the content that we've thrown up there. But you'll see over time patterns about which type of content really, really works. And I think that's obviously, um, that is really valuable to an organization because I think today, you know, despite what a lot of people say, most people don't really know how well their content performs. That's, that's absolutely our experience as well. And I mean, I think many, many CMOs will tell you that, uh, you know, a large percent of the content they're producing uh, is also not being used. It's sort of the 80-20 rule. Yeah. And so then the question is, what is the right, thing. And in the, in the spirit of hyper-personalization, um, and to the extent you can create an experience where you know that I've heard what you said, um, I've customized something for you. What we find is the engagement that you have in that kind of environment is very different than, again, compared to an email where I've attached a few items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and like I was saying, then it obviously allows you to focus in the content that performs well, make sure that you're tweaking. So this is an ongoing process, right? Uh, just like anything else in the sales or your sales process, you don't set up your room once and kind of forget about it. As you said, you set it up, you personalize it, and then you make sure you're, you're at the right content at the right time. Yeah, that's right. And you know, if, if you think about this idea that there's uh sort of the buyer engagement version and then there's the relationship management version mm -hmm. and then there's even that educational version in some cases um there's a, a one dsr that you're using to go through a sales process so for example we have a company in the financial services business and they sell 401ks and so going through that whole rfp process they were using a dsr with the buying committee and what we realized is because there was this little introduction video because of the way they had organized the DSR with the logo of the company that they were calling on, it, it had a very personalized feel. And as they recounted back to us um, after they had gone through the sales process, that at the end, having a DSR was a differentiator versus the other two companies who may have had similar products, but the nature of the presentation up until that very finals presentation was different with an email only versus information being presented like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe that as time goes on here, and, and you know, Gartner has said that they believe that by 2026, 30% of B2B transactions will be flowing through some part of digital room like what we're talking about. Yeah, and, uh, and you talked about personalization, even hyper-personalization, but I think also the fact, as you alluded to there, sometimes it, it 
it just takes some simple things to show that you've made an effort to personalize it. Like you put the logo, you put, you know, a, a welcome video directed to that, you know, custom for that customer. It doesn't, I, I think sometimes people think, wow, this sounds like a lot. I'm going to hyper personalize everything. But often it doesn't take that much. All you're really doing is sort of saying, I listened to you and I've taken the time to put something together for you. I mean, yeah, my expectation on the other end, my expectation is not that 100% of the content is personalized to me. I'm expecting probably by 10%. That's, and I think that's very reasonable. I, mm -hmm. but you know, if you think about this, John, as an example, if we did a call and I, I send you a DSR and I say, yeah. John, I've included the, um, the call recording and at, and at seven minutes, I've highlighted it. That's the part that you said you wanted to share with other, you know, members. Now, mm -hmm. I could do all that in an email. But it's very hard to keep it organized when mm -hmm. you do that in email. So, you know, going back to your point about simplicity, I, I liken it to you could present a diamond engagement ring in a cardboard box or in a Tiffany's box. Mm -hmm. And the simplicity of the Tiffany's box, you know, the, the packaging of it really does make a difference in terms of how the information is received. Yeah. And so we're, we're big believers that the way it looks and the way that it's displayed um, makes a difference in the buyer's journey. Yeah, that's why if you can, if you can, you just buy the Tiffany box and then go get your ring somewhere cheaper. There you go. That's, <laughs> nice. now, that's that's the way to, you know, I, I like that innovation. Yeah, um, but no, you're 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 a hundred percent correct, and I think I think also part of it, uh, what you're tapping into here, Mark, is we have this feeling of just being overwhelmed and overloaded. I mean, you say you like the statistics about like the amount of research and that the customers do. Um, you know, prior to even engaging with salespeople, they do, but they're also overwhelmed. They also don't even know what they're researching half the time. They don't even know if the information is correct and that. So the more structure and transparency you can bring to it, the better, because you're really kind of going against the flow there, right? In terms of people are used to being overwhelmed and now you're presenting something that's very uh, organized and personalized and kind of cutting out the noise. Well, you are. And if you think about that, what ends up happening, John, is it, it then begins to evoke the fact that you are an expert on this topic. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's 401ks or whether it's medical devices, um, for many people who are buying things as part of a buying committee, it's the first time they've bought it or maybe the second time, but they're by no means experts on it. Yeah. And then the question back to the point you just made is how much time do you want to spend researching something? Like not, you know, it, it, it's not worth everyone's time to research everything. And so to the extent that a great seller is putting the right content in one place to make it easy for people to access and peruse, I can tell you just before this call, I started getting hits from a DSR that uh, one of our sellers had added me to, and it's for a, a prospective medical device customer. We had a call yesterday. And then just before I joined you on this call, I started getting, getting pinged that, the, that uh, one of the people was looking at this document and that document and this document. So right off the bat, I'm realizing some of what we've got here seems to be resonating. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're going to buy it, but it's a indication that we're on the right track in terms of what we've presented. Yeah. Where, whereas, as you said, I mean, with traditionally with email, you look at, oh, look, they opened that and they clicked on the link. And that's about all you can probably uh, deduce from, from that email, if you're lucky. Whereas, like you're saying, you're seeing them actually consume the consume the actual content and what what's within the content. Yeah, and you know, there's there's little simple uh, things um, like just getting people to bookmark it. So I send one of these to you, and I could text it to you and say, "Hey, John, um, just bookmark this, and when when we connect the next time, this is the place that I'm going to use to keep everything organized in terms of um, what we've been talking about." And so then you get people to bookmark it and then the, the buying committee is bookmarking it. And then I think one of the other, uh, you know, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication things is when somebody new enters into a buying group or somebody new enters in as a seller, um, some of these DSRs have the capability to have a chat function where people can ask questions as well. And that's really cool as a way to be able to jump into a DSR and, and kind of get up to speed fast if you're one of the newer people getting onto it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, that's that's great too, obviously, because uh, you know then you save time from, from onboarding somebody into a process or swapping out somebody. Tell me about uh, how much is AI playing a role in, in what you're doing? 
it's playing an increasing role as it is in so many things. Sure. Um, what we're, we're finding is, you know, when this first came out um, a couple of years ago, um, it was a much more manual process to build it. And now between the template and being able to, you know, answer two or three questions, um, AI is really helping to start to generate, I'll call it 90% of what you need. And then all you're needing to do is a little bit of personalization. Mm -hmm. and so what that does is it just makes it much easier to become part of your standard operating procedure that um, after a discovery call, it's a great way to recap, you know, with the, with the video or the transcript and be able to put everything in one place and know that when you send that off, um, you've captured what the person has said is important to them. And then the key is you might have 10 of those that you've done over the course of two days. You're not chasing all of them. You're letting that buyer's journey do its thing. And right. when they click on a link or there, there's some activity, that's a time maybe to reach out, but it allows you to scale in a way that just one at a time um, is very difficult. And obviously makes that outreach a little more elegant um, if they've been engaging with the with the content so you can be again, you know, very targeted and personalized in your outreach. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we have, we, we have, uh, uh, no problem saying, Hey, John, I, I noticed that you were clicking on this particular content. I'm curious, mm -hmm. what, what was it that you discovered? Did you find what you were looking for? I mean, that's a, that's a totally different thing than just the old school. Um, I'm checking in with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old I'm checking in with you. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me, where do, where do you see uh, digital sales rooms going? What's the future? Put on your futurist hat for a second. I think increasingly what's going to happen is it's going to become um, the coin of the realm, if you will, in uh, specific industries. And I think, um, you know, one of the one of the analysts likened DSRs to um, iPods when the first iPod came out. So many of us had, you know, CDs at that mm -hmm. time. And it was like, why, why do I need this thing? But then once you got it, you realize, wow, like this is a better way. And I think there's, there's an element of that with the DSR. You really do need to see it. You need to see what it, uh, what it looks like, what it does, and why it works. And, and as a result, I think it will become, and it's, this is starting to happen in certain industries, um, self-evident that it's a better way than just using email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, give me some. I know you touched on one earlier, but give me some examples without naming them. But give me some examples of how uh, how customers have used this effectively. Well, for example, we've got a a large medical device company that um, has done a number of different things. You know what what they've done is they've they've got this uh, standard DSR template, and then what they've done is they have organized the templates by market. Hmm. And so the marketing organization has said, you know, for the Latin America, for Asia Pacific, for EMEA, they, they're able to quickly um, organize what people are looking for by market and make it very easy for sellers to be delivering a consistent message. And with this particular med device company, their, their biggest problem was people were focused on selling a, a single product and not focused on selling a solution. Mm -hmm. And so the, the DSR has made it very easy to tell the solution story, even as you have featured the specific product that the person said they were interested in. Wow, that's an excellent, that's an excellent example. And uh, so uh, before we end up here, Mark, uh, uh, what else would you like people to know about digital sales rooms and Allego? Well, what I would uh, just like them to know is that um, Allego is an enablement platform that's designed to help sellers get ready to sell from, from onboarding to launch of new products, to content and messaging, and then to this piece that we call digital selling. So this is really one part of a larger platform that um, is, is part of the ecosystem that great sales organizations have. And that to the extent that you investigate this and you learn about it, um, I believe people are going to realize that this is a critical part of digital selling and particularly infused with AI. It's, um, it's the future of the business in many ways as it relates to how sellers will interact with buyers yeah well i would uh, i would encourage you as part of your digital transformation journey to check this out because as mark said you know the, the the digital transformation was happening before covid but it's been accelerated and now to be perfectly honest if you don't have a if you don't if you're not considering your digital transformation journey you're going to get left behind 
very quickly. So thanks again. All of Mark's information will be below this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you again, Mark. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Goodbye.